You ever done this before? You're all the way ready, you want to get going, and you got that. Hit it again. I mean, we got nothing, right? We got a bad battery. This will make sense what we're going to do here. But what we want, go ahead. So what we're going to talk about in this video, and you guys are going to have, this is going to be kind of a little summary for us on this, is the fact that this sucks, okay? There is no point in grabbing bad batteries. And the reason we don't even have it bolted in is we're still diagnosing. We're trying to figure out what we got going on. And all this does is waste time because now you've went, you had to go get this battery, right? And then you're, you know, uh, coming over here, it's not going to work. Then you're, and you're probably not going to just walk away from this battery. You're probably going to grab a meter and test it. And you're going to spend some more time. And then you're going to do this. You're going to go, oh, my battery needs charged. You guys want to know why it's hard as an entry level tech to make money? Is you got to quit wasting time on the easy stuff, the stuff you know, right? Like textbook, okay? So we're not even going to attempt to get into this stuff unless we have a, a good battery. And we're using this for a mock-up here just to, uh, to make an example. But we got talking about that where we thought of uh, a good video and thought about review is to think, think of some other areas that we call wasted tech time that you're just killing the day. And I talk to service managers, I talk to uh, shop owners all the time. They say, oh, God, entry level techs, they cost me so much. Like, I'm constantly training them. Okay, constantly have to tell them what to do. <clears throat> and when I uh, take a look at that, and while you guys are watching live, if you have any suggestions, you run a shop, manage a shop, had employees, maybe uh, made mistakes in the beginning and learned them yourself, throw it in the comments, put your suggestions in there, maybe something you struggled with or you see and how you fixed it. I don't wanna hear this just constant bitching about how entry level techs can't do it. Let's fix the problem, let's teach you guys well, and let's give you some real tools. Do you remember when we came up with our list, you guys threw out a couple generic problems. Do you remember what they were? Organization. Organization. So uh, what was the other one? Anybody remember? Preparation. What was that? Preparation. Preparation. Preparation organization. You know what the problem is with that? It's like every motivational speaker that gets up and goes, you got to be organized and you got to be prepared. That won't ever fix anything. In the real world, you got to have real solutions. You got to ask yourself, what was wrong with my organization? Was it the way I laid my parts out? Did I put too many parts together? Did I not label things? You need to be very specific if you really want to fix a, a problem and you want to make money. I mean, don't you want to make yourself money, you want to make the dealership money, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're chasing. Uh, what was the other one? Preparation, I think. Prepar yeah. Preparation. Preparation, same thing. You come up and you say, hey, you know what? You're a new tech, you need to be prepared. What does that mean? What does being prepared mean? These are some of the things that focus on that. When I think of being prepared, one of the first things that comes to my mind is having the tools ready. If I put the bike on the lift and then come over and then I'm like, okay, geez, what do I need now? Oh, I need a, I'm gonna do a tire. I start messing around with this. We, we did this in a different video. If I take that wheel off and the tire's not stock, I, I did nothing but waste a bunch of time, right? So if I get the bike up here and I take a look at, I wanna make sure I have my parts, that's being prepared, right? There's a specific thing you can chase. The other thing is what tools do I need? Instead of go to the box, grab a socket, go here, grab a wrench, go here, get a torque wrench, go here, get a screwdriver. Look at the work order, see what the job's asking you to do, and then go look at those fasteners. Now that is a fix, right? That's gonna save you some time in the day. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's gonna, cause you're gonna look at it. Now listen, I'm not perfect, and I'm sure nobody else is either, right? And we understand that you're gonna get in there. I go to my toolbox a few times, believe me, I'm just like that, but I'm not going there 20 times. The other thing you're asking yourself is how measurable can your improvement be? You know what I mean? I can look at the major stuff, but if I get into something and go, oh shoot, I forgot that specialty tool or whatnot, oh, I lost time, but I don't wanna be there doing that 20 times. So we got a couple examples, batteries, have it known before you even mess with it. Tools ready. Um, tires. You get the bike off the lift. This is a common complaint by the dealer. They're getting ready for the test ride, or even worse, the vehicle's uh, taken for a test drive because it was a carb problem or a fuel issue. And on the test ride, all the tires are low or, or it feels heavy or whatever. You know, do it. You, all these motorcycles, ATVs, whatever, we want to air the tires while it's on the bench. So you think it'd be a good idea when you're grabbing your torque wrench, you got a bike on the lift, you grab an air pressure gauge and an air chuck. Required tools. 
People are laughing. I say, well, I'm doing a fuel job, but now all of a sudden you're telling me that I need tire tools? Yep, yep. I'm telling you, you want to make time, okay? The other thing, uh, the repair order. We talked about this, Tyler, you brought that up. Good job this morning about documentation, okay? If I put a tire on and then happen to notice it needs brakes, and then I go, uh, hey, parts guy, I need brakes for this, and I don't write down, I turn the work order in, I'm back here. Now you got the parts guy chasing you back down going, hey, didn't you put brakes on that? Now they're walking this way, you're walking that way, you got all of this lost time because you're, you're just not doing it the first time, doing it when it's most beneficial. So that was another good one, fuel. Oh my, I could strangle some of my former employees where I went, I ran out of gas a couple times. This was such a problem that, you know, you don't want to fill five gallons, it gets to be pretty expensive in a gas tank on a carb job, but you want to put enough in there to be able to do a good test ride that we even created a checklist at my shop that said, is the fuel tank got fuel in it? Yes or no, what was the level? Quarter, half, three quarter full, and the tech would circle it before the test ride, where the tires aired, all those things, right? Um, pre preparation, I don't wanna to to take my helmet off and be looking at the gas cap at the front door as I'm ready to go for a test ride, wasted time. Uh, the order, does anybody remember what I talked about on the order? Give you guys a voice. The order of operation, like, Go ahead, what, get, take it. what you want to do with it, like while you're doing a tire change, like getting the oil plug, I mean, just some things you can get out of the way yeah. and let it drain while you're doing something else. Yeah, no kidding. Now, let me ask you something. That stuff is going to take time to figure out. I call it the order saying that, hey, okay, I look at the whole job and it's front brakes, uh, rear tire, uh, oil change, and air filter. I want to be thinking about what order do I want to do that stuff in. Okay, the only one that makes a whole bunch of sense on that, get that drain plug out, get it draining while you're doing the other work, you will make time, so order's good. The what else, okay? That was where you talk about, you guys as newer techs a lot of time, or as far as you can go and you don't have the knowledge or you don't have the information to continue on, we're saying, what else could you do? That's the time to be doing all this other stuff, tires, work order, air filters, uh, cable adjust, you know, whatever you're supposed to do, right? Um, and if you ain't got nothing to do and you're a new tech, you better know, you better have a backup plan. And this doesn't really have to be just new tech, but that's our focus. What about grab a broom? What about go up the, the shipping department and say, hey, you need uh, help opening UPS? You just taking that knife and slicing open those boxes to make time for someone else, you're part of that team while you're waiting for your future instruction. There's always something better to do than just, just waiting, right? Uh, like I said, I brought up the suggestions that I thought, you know, any folks out there that have information that is valuable to share, share it away. We love it. And all of this, I want to kind of summarize this as this. Your whole goal, especially as entry-level tech, is to understand the fact, and the dealers need to understand, you are not going to have many of the answers you need. And so if you can save yourself through the course of a day on all of this stuff, what you've bought is you've bought yourself a little insurance package for when stuff gets tough. When you get to that tire and you've never done a stubborn bead before, like it's your first one, you're like, God, I can't get this bead to break free. And you're like stuck to where you need help. You do not want to be in that same day where you had a, a dead battery earlier. You didn't have your tools ready. Uh, the tires were flat. I guess you wouldn't be there yet. The work order wasn't filled out. The bike's out of fuel. And maybe this is other jobs where you lost all this time and now you're at the end of the day because what's happening is that dealership is adding it up. They're looking at it because we bill by the hour, right? So if we bill by the hour and you can't produce because of wasted stuff, that's why you're hearing this difficulty. Now, let me ask you this. If you go out there, okay, you graduate from here, you do whatever you do, you do your training and you go out there and you rock star this area, do you believe that you're gonna have more time to learn the stuff you need to learn? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna struggle with the, the tech that works for me that does all of this wrong and then is still fighting the other problems. It's gonna be really hard to invest. It's gonna be really hard to have faith that, gosh dang man, if you can't you know, do the simple stuff, how do I wanna go you know, deeper into that? One of those videos we made the other day, somebody uh, commented on there, uh, I can't, it was either cable adjustment I think, and they said, yeah, God, if someone can't do throttle cables, this was one of your, our followers' comments, if they can't do throttle cables, how are they gonna do stuff inside an engine? You know what I mean? When it really gets harder, if you will. 
we have that saying around here. We say it isn't always about being harder or easier. We'd say, you know, on my shirts, it says it's all nuts and bolts, right? You know, it's throwing wrenches, thinking how, about how we can be efficient with it, and getting yourself ready to dive into this. Our students here, just a couple months, they're going out for their OJT. We got two of them right now that are doing OJT. We got an auto tech that you're turning wrenches every day. A couple more that are heading out, so really think about how to get prepared. And I, I would say between you two guys that are working at Yamaha, I mean, you're already hearing some of this stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Anyway, that's our tip of the day. Uh, follow these things, learn how to not waste that time, and you're, you're gonna get it. All right, make it a great day and keep wrenching.